welcome back to our United for Math series on multiplicative comparisons. In this final lesson, we're going to be using our understanding of multiplicative comparison and applying those to word problems. After years of experience, I know that this is the lesson that students and parents and even teachers sometimes often dread. It is a little time consuming and there's lots and lots of steps. But now that we have the understanding of those key terms, like times as many, then we'll have no problem spotting this type of problem. One issue that does get in the way with students is they often get into ruts with word problems. They think, all right, it's a word problem. I'm gonna look for the numbers and I'm gonna solve it. I know we're working on multiplication. I'm just gonna multiply. But these aren't like your average multiplication problems. We're comparing, it's almost like a ratio. So let's take a look at our first word problem and I'll show you the ins and outs and you'll have no problem at all. In our first example, we have the coach ordered 35 basketballs for PE class. He ordered five times as many, oh, there's that key word, basketballs than volleyballs. How many volleyballs did he order? So we're gonna start with our cubes method. Circle the numbers, 35 and five. Then we're gonna underline our question, how many volleyballs did he order? Then our keywords, times as many, and we know that indicates multiplication. So since we understand that key term times as many, we know that this is gonna be five times something is equal to something else. So we're gonna start by creating that first. Five times something. So let's reread our problem. The coach ordered 35 basketballs for PE class. He ordered five times as many basketballs than volleyballs. So we're gonna use our understanding of that variable process and create a variable for this blank. So that would be a V for volleyball. And that's gonna equal the total number of basketballs. So we have five times V equals 35. Now that we have an equation for this, all we have to do is solve for that variable, which in this case is a V that stands for volleyballs. Now there's two ways we could do this. Students can use their understanding of basic multiplication facts, like five times something is 35, or they could use the inverse operation of division. So they could say 35 divided by five equals V, or the number of volleyballs. So let's go with multiplication because most students at this point know all of their basic facts. So if I'm looking at this, I'd say five times something is 35. And students should know or can skip count by fives and find out that V is equal to seven. So if I look back at my question, how many volleyballs did he order? I would say he ordered seven volleyballs because I know that five times as many as seven is 35, and that would equal the number of basketballs. When you're going to solve a problem, you really wanna make sure that you reread the question at the end and find out what it's really asking you. These multiplicative comparison problems are gonna get trickier as we go, and you really wanna know what you're looking for before you finalize that answer. Let's look at our next problem, which is going to be a doozy, so hold on. So in this problem, Heidi's mom made cupcakes for her birthday party. She made four times as many chocolate cupcakes as vanilla cupcakes. There was a total of 40 cupcakes. How many of each type of cupcake did she make? So we wanna use that cubes method where we circle the numbers first. There's a four and a 40. Then we're gonna underline our question. How many of each type of cupcake did she make? Then let's look for those keywords. So we have times as many, so we have four times as many chocolate cupcakes as vanilla cupcakes. So we know there's more chocolate cupcakes. So at this point, when students see four and 40, they immediately wanna say, the answer's 10, 10's the answer. But this is a multiplicative comparison problem. It isn't your standard multiplication problem. And they haven't told us the amount of chocolate or vanilla cupcakes. So we have a lot of work to do. So again, four times as many chocolate as vanilla, but we don't know how many vanilla there are and we don't know how many chocolate there are. All we know is there's a total of 40 cupcakes. So we have to find out how many vanilla and how many chocolate to find our answer. 
and we're going to start by creating a comparison. And we're going to use a model for that. When we use a model, we're going to start by creating a little bit of a chart. So we have vanilla and we have chocolate. And we know we have four times as many chocolate cupcakes. So we use these models when we were creating equations in our first lesson. So now we're going to use them here. I'm going to take and I'm going to make four boxes for the chocolate cupcakes. So that indicates that there's four times as many. But I don't know how many vanilla there are. So I'm going to put another box for vanilla. So I have one box for vanilla that indicates that that's the base, and then four boxes for chocolate because there's four times as many. Now I'm going to create a bracket around both of them, and I'm going to make that equal 40 because I know all together these boxes equal 40. That seems like a lot, right? But try to think of this as like a ratio. So for every one vanilla cupcake, there's four chocolate cupcakes. So there's four times as many. Whatever that box is going to be, we're going to multiply that box by four to find out the chocolate number. So let's get back to it. So now I have five boxes that equal 40, and I can create my comparison. Because if I have each of these boxes, that means five times box equals 40. Five, which is the number of boxes, times whatever's in the box equals 40. Now I can use my multiplication skills to figure out what that box is. So five times blank is 40. I know that five times eight is 40. Now we're going to take that number eight and we're going to put it inside each of those boxes. This will give us a good hint on how many cupcakes we have. So I'm going to put an 8 in each box, and that is going to represent how many are in there. Think of it as, that's how many cupcakes are in the box. So I can immediately tell you how many cupcakes are in the vanilla box, because vanilla equals one box of 8, or one group of 8, 1 times 8, which is eight. So I know how many vanilla cupcakes I have. Now I have to find out how many chocolate cupcakes I have. So I have four groups of eight. So chocolate is equal to four times eight. And four times eight is 32. Now I know I have 32 chocolate cupcakes. If you wanted to check, you could add eight plus 32 and that would equal 40. Whereas when students were saying, 4 and 10, well, that only equals 14. Do you see how this could drive people a little crazy, especially when it's something new that they don't understand? Yeah, me too. So let's try one more problem just so that I'm sure that you have it. In our final example, Joseph's dog weighs six times as much as Tom's dog. Together, the dogs weigh 84 pounds. How many more pounds is Joseph's dog than Tom's dog? Let's start with that cubes method. So we have 6 and 84. Now we want to look at our question. How many more pounds is Joseph's dog than Tom's dog? Remember when I said to really reread that question at the end? This is one of those cases. They're not asking us how much Joseph or Tom's dog weighs. They're looking for how many more pounds. So what we know when we say how many more, that's subtraction. So not only do we have a multiplicative comparison here, we're also going to be using subtraction. So let's set this up the same way. First, let's box our keywords so we know what's bigger than what. So Joseph's dog is six times as much as Tom's dog. So Joseph's dog is larger and Tom's dog is smaller. So Tom, in this case, will have the one box. Tom has one box, and Joseph will have six boxes because he's six times as big or weighs six times as much as Tom's dog. So we'll put a J here for Joseph, and we'll give him six boxes. Now you could also use blanks here, but I like to use boxes because that way students have something to fill in and they don't lose their dashes into each other. 
So all together, the dogs weigh 84 pounds. 84. Now, just like before, we're going to count up all the boxes to create our multiplicative comparison. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven times box equals 84. Now we have to figure out what that box is. If students have a good understanding of their multiplication skills, they could say seven times 12 is 84. Or you could do division and do 84 divided by seven and find out that answer is 12. So now that we know that seven times 12 is 84, we're gonna put 12 in all of these boxes. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Some students get confused and they wanna just say, the answer's 12, 12, but it's not the case. We got more steps to solving this problem and finding out how much more the one dog weighs than the other. So let's look and find out how much each dog weighs. So the T is going to be one times 12. So Tom's dog is one times 12, which is equal to 12. And Joseph's dog is one, two, three, four, five, six times 12. Six times 12, which is 72. So now that we know how much each dog weighs, let's check back to our question. How many more, which means subtraction. So we need to subtract 12 from 72. 72 minus 12 is 60. So Joseph's dog weighs 60 pounds more than Tom's dog. I know these problems can be confusing, but I hope using this model will help cut that frustration a little bit for you and your student. So when we look at these problems, remember, we're making boxes for the amount of times as many. So like in that last problem, we had six times as many. So we made six boxes and the other one just had one box. It's always one to the times as many. So if we had three times as many, there'd be three boxes. Then create a bracket to equal the total. Once you have that, you'll be able to create your multiplicative comparison equation. From there, you solve for the unknown and then fill in those boxes. I really hope that this helps and you utilize the strategies that we've worked on throughout this series, like creating equations from word problems and utilizing variables. Thank you again for joining us at United for Math. We'll see you in our next series.